homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, it's that time of year. It's April the 2nd. It's time to get our sweet potatoes in the ground. Now, this is what's left of our sweet potatoes. We've got two things of them. Uh, Crystal and I will be working uh, on eating these as the year goes by because our potatoes are all sprouted out and they're sprouted out so much that they're pretty shriveled so they're not going to be edible. Uh, I'll be getting all of them out of that rack. It's right over here. I'll be getting all of them out of that rack as soon as I make sure that we got plenty of uh, good plants coming up in the potato patch. But it's time to uh, get a five gallon bucket. Got to get a five gallon bucket full of sweet potatoes to do in our in our uh, sweet potato bed to raise sets. Now, what type of sweet potato do I want to use? Well, I want to use these. These little bitty sweet potatoes. Okay? The little fingerling ones are the ones that are going to give you the most stuff. And let me show you why. Now, come over here. If you look, see the hairs off of those? Every one of those hairs is going to become a sprout. So, those are what we want. Now, this one is not what I want. Uh, see the end here, how it's starting to dry and look tough? Now, there are some, some hairs on there and some sprouts available, but it won't do as good as some of these others because this is starting to dehydrate too much. Now, some people think that this would be the best potato to use. But the truth is, this potato is two years old. These are not going to do much more than they've already done. So this potato, it actually is real light because it's dehydrated terribly bad. But the sprouts make it look like it would be good for this purpose. Now these potatoes are done. They're, they're two years old. They've got to come out of the basement. and uh, But we'll get to that. And potatoes like this. This is probably big enough to eat and have enough potato to worry about. So Crystal and I will want to keep these to eat and use the smaller ones. And we won't have a problem. I can just reach over here and get gobs and gobs of these small potatoes. So a five-gallon bucket will give me enough sets to last for 200 foot a row, 300 foot a row. Uh, I'll be able to get these. I'll plant them now. I'll start harvesting them uh, about the 1st of June. And there will be all kinds of them. Because sweet potatoes like it hot. Okay, I'll see you out at the bed. Here we go, folks. we got a 5-gallon bucket of sweet potatoes. Putting them on the scale. Nineteen point two pounds, so about twenty pounds of sweet potatoes. And what am I going to get out of that? Anywhere between two hundred and four hundred pounds of sweet potatoes out of the garden. Ten to twenty to one.
just got done making the the bed for my sweet potatoes. That is so much easier than the days when I was a kid. We didn't have a bucket on our tractor and we would have to till that with a hand tiller, shovel it out, scoop it out, then put our sweet potatoes in. So let's go over and, and bury these sweet potatoes and you'll see what we're doing. Now what you're looking at is where the bucket's sitting, that's hard packed dirt all in there. And I scraped all of the tillings back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those potatoes and lay them out in there. And then I'm just going to pull that dirt that I had tilled and just pull it over those potatoes so that they're, oh, two inches under the ground. So let's get at that. First off, you got to spread those potatoes so that they're only one layer thick. Now, once you get them out there and layered in like that, uh, some are perfect, some are not. Most of them aren't uh, completely not touching another one, but my grandmother and grandfather, they would get down there and put every one just perfect. And I don't care. I'm not that worried about it. Uh, but they had to do it because they had to grow a lot more. So. Uh, I'm going to move a couple of these and I'm going to start putting the dirt over. Okay, and that's what it takes to make a bed. Now, I'll go get some boards and put around this some uh, old chunks of wood. And uh, that's a sweet potato bed. It will be uh, delivering me sweet potato sets. Oh, somewhere mid-May to, to June the 1st. There's my wood delene delineating the bed. Now, this is probably the last year I'm going to get out of that wood. It's pretty rotten. But all it needs to do is delineate the bed. Uh, I am not going to cover this with a row cover. Because if I cover it with a row cover, it wouldn't matter. The weeds are still going to come up. So I'd rather be able to come through and shave those weeds off without having to take the row cover off. Uh, the 21st is our last frost date. 
of course that's a new last frost date but the 21st is our last frost date so I've got 21 days none of those will be poking up in 21 days anyway so I'll just go through every little bit until they start coming up and just shave the top of that bed and that'll get rid of the weeds okay now if you like this kind of stuff this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of lifestyle be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe we do this homestead and stuff every day sometimes one sometimes five videos a week just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week and if you hit the little bell it'll notify you when we upload a video we upload every Sunday and now with that being said it's time for me to get on to the next thing